Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 5. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 12, so a lot of stuff happened in this episode. Also, very much so leading into next episode, which is Supergirl's 100th episode. It's a massive episode, and I can't wait to talk about that in tonight's video about the new trailer. But for now, we're going to review this episode, Episode 12. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this episode, I really liked it. I thought it was really good. I very much so was intrigued the whole episode, and I think it's mainly down to win. And I thought Kara was really good as well. You know, I was very much so intrigued with everything that was happening, bar a few storylines in this episode. So the main stuff really worked, and I just was really engaged. And so you have Toy Man, you have these two different versions. It's revealed they're alive in this episode, but they're inside, like, the DEO sort of, like, mainframe. I don't know what you call it. But, you know, they're still kicking, and so that is the main sort of threat of the episode. I didn't expect Toy Man to come back, but it was a sort of welcome comeback from last episode, obviously, when Toy Man was there. But also, you know, his dad was there, and that was really a nice addition that I wasn't expecting, and I thought it really worked. So, basically, later in the episode, there's this attack on the DEO. Because Toy Man, the bad version, the doppelganger of Wynn, is inside, Lex knows about this. It was part of his plan to try and find out more about Leviathan, and, you know, it's a bit complicated. But it all gets resolved towards the end of the episode. After that attack, you have, like, Lexo suits being taken over. And this is all due to Toy Man's virus. And so you have Wynn fighting Toy Man inside the computer system. So he uses some Legion tech. Wynn goes in. He actually has like a fist fight. He's flying around because, you know, gravity is not a thing inside there because they're inside a computer essentially. And so that was a good scene. Wynn versus Toy Man. Also, his dad's there. He trusts his dad. And in the end, his dad saves him because he's realized. That, yeah, maybe he hasn't changed that much since he's been inside here. But, you know, he, you know, saw what Wynn has done and, you know, he supports him, basically. And so I thought that was kind of touching and kind of nice. And, yeah, so I just thought Wynn was really good. He gave some really good advice to Kara this episode as well. And had some nice talking scenes. And basically, it was just, like, great Wynn content. Obviously, we've only got one episode left with Wynn, which is very sad. But I have to say, I'm very pleased with what they've done with him. But anyway, let's move on. So we have the karaoke scene in the bar early in the episode. This sort of leads on to what happens with Kara and William towards the end. And a lot of the conflict with Kara and William comes from the fact that she has to lie. And, you know, that actually goes into next episode. And that's been a big theme, like, throughout Supergirl's whole run. Because on the CW shows, they hate lying and... Lines like such a massive thing obviously in real life it's a thing but it's nowhere near as big as they make it out to be like it's the worst thing if you have ever lied to someone like if you say no lies you're a good person if you say lies you're a bad person that's just not the way of the world however you know this is part of the reason of the story why they can't go on this date that they try and do and so this karaoke seems very good and yeah, I don't dig William with Kara, I just don't see it happening and I don't kind of want it to happen. But obviously I'm open to it if, you know, it's good in the end. But right now, I'm not digging it, so I'm not mad about how they went around it this episode because it kind of made sense with the storyline. However, you know, I really like the karaoke scene. William and Kara, they go and they have this singing scene and the song... You know, the whole thing was really good. Kara was great. Obviously, Melissa's a singer, so obviously she hits those high notes and stuff like that, even though it's sort of like a jokey situation. It's just karaoke. But it was great content, and I really enjoyed it. And seeing, like, Alex's reaction, John's reaction, Wynn's reaction, it was just the best. Like, seeing our whole team there, including Wynn, John, Alex, and Kara, it was just the best seeing them all around, and it really brings you back to those past seasons where you had those amazing moments that I guess we kind of took for granted really in the past and now you realize oh shit they were that good together and you sort of more are aware of how good they are together now and so yeah that karaoke scene was really good and we have Wynn revealing his name he is known as computer lad in the future which is a not very good name if you ask me and Wynn agrees with me by the end of the episode and he changes his name to toy man 
I thought that was very fitting. However, it doesn't really make sense as to why he would call himself Toy Man because he's not using these toys or anything like that. He's more of like a computer type guy. That's why he was called Computer Lad. So, yes, his name doesn't make sense, but it's very fitting. And maybe he does end up using like toys and technology like that in the future as part of, you know, who his superhero persona is now that he's changed his name to Toy Man, his superhero name. So, yeah, that was cool. And I have to include some negatives, and I think this is some negatives since like, I don't know, like a while ago. So the stuff with Obsidian is kind of dragging on, you know, there's no answer, they just keep on trying to fill it up for bits in the episodes, like every week we're like, oh, what's happening with Obsidian? No one really actually cares, I'm talking about the audience. But they're like, oh, we're developing this new technology, but we can't quite perfect it. This happens every single week. Nothing is happening with that storyline, and nothing is happening with Lena's storyline. Yeah, they're making little advancements, but non a cherry or whatever the frick it is. I don't even know what it is. It's just like a project that she's been working on since literally episode one of this season is going nowhere. It literally goes nowhere. What is happening with Lena right now is just them trying to include her in the episode. That is basically it, and that's the same with Akrata and what's happening at Obsidian, because there is no progression in any of those stories, and as of right now, it's just used for filler, essentially. And Nonna Cherry is stupid because, you know, people have found out about it now, everyone knows, but she's still trying to do it in secret, and... I just don't see the point in her trying to carry on doing this when everyone knows about it and basically she just keeps on failing so I don't see the actual point in that storyline. I don't know if that's just me but let me know in the comments down below do you think they're dragging on this Lena and Obsidian storyline for the sake of it because it feels like nothing like Lena's had nothing to do apart from you know her relationship with Kara that's probably the bigger thing and the other storyline is kind of like a nothing storyline that you will forget and you do forget week to week you're like oh this scene again oh this is gonna happen again whatever but yeah so that's the only negative towards this episode because I really like this episode also the old Leviathan lady comes back she's returned and I'm guessing she's gonna be in part of the season a bit more I think Leviathan's going to come to the sort of forefront a bit more towards the end. Even though we've been, you know, with Leviathan since like, I don't know, midway through the first part of the season. And now it's episode 12. I think they've got 22 episodes this season. I could be wrong. So they've still got a while. they still got like 10 episodes or so. However, I think they need to make some progression because as of right now, it's kind of villain of the weeks. Apart from this week and last week, it was really interesting with Toy Man. Apart from that... Nothing more is going to happen. Obviously, next episode is different as well because it's the 100th episode. It's Mixie. It's characters returning from the past. They're going to be sort of reflecting on the past. So it's not going to be about Leviathan, and that's good. But I mean, past that, we need some more Leviathan stuff. We need them as actual villains and actual threats rather than just being in the background. And so also towards the end of the episode, it's revealed that Alex is leaving the DEO as the director. And that's due to the fact that Lex is sort of looking over everyone's shoulder. You know, there's these precautions. They got Lexo suits and stuff and everything's going wrong under the guise of Lex. And she just can't do it anymore. So she's joining John at the tower and they're going to be sort of operating out of there and that's going to be our sort of new DEO. We've seen from set photos, spoiler alert, click off right now. Okay, so the DEO gets destroyed in a few episodes time and that's going to be, I guess, due to the fact that Lex is there. You know, our heroes have already left there, so maybe that gives it a reason to be destroyed because it doesn't really matter as much anymore. It only matters in terms of Lex and Brainy right now. So Brainy's the new director of the DEO, director Docs, and so that wasn't a big revelation. I sort of suspected that would happen after Alex leaves because Brainy's very much so involved with Lex right now. He's still continuing down that storyline. They're both manipulating everyone once again. And Brainy obviously isn't compliant with everything, but he's just going along with it. And so Wynn actually leaves, but he's back next episode, so I guess he goes back to the future and then he brings back Monel with him because Monel is coming back. You guys have seen the photos, go check out my video from yesterday. I was freaking the fuck out and I just can't wait. I'm going to be talking about Monel in today's trailer video, so please be sure to not miss that later tonight because that is coming out later tonight. 
And yeah, so I guess that's how Wynn and Monel both show up next episode. And now let's move on to talk about Kara and William. So they're sort of supposed to go on this day. They're all dressed up. You see Kara in like heels, like a dress. William's got the suit on. They're looking very, very smart. It's like a very smart kind of date, like not just like going to the cinema or something like that. So it's like a proper dinner thing, I guess. And so they're about to go and then Kara postpones their date and she just doesn't feel that way about him. And I think that's a lie. I think she does have feelings. That's what I got hinted at this episode. However, it was due to the fact that she had to lie and she was sort of playing along with this lie that she felt bad. And you have that talk with Kara and Alex towards the end of the episode about her having to lie. And that's essentially why they cut off that date. So I think there is definitely still a chance that William and Kara are still a thing, they're gonna be a thing probably, or at least they're gonna try and, you know, be a thing, I guess, sometime in the near future, but maybe Monel is gonna put a spanner in the works next episode when he returns. Obviously, Monel is only gonna be around for one episode, and William's gonna be around a lot more, so I still think there is a very high chance. I don't think, like, Kara's gonna get back with Monel, although, of course, I would love that, because, you know, they're the best relationship on the whole of the CW and Supergirl. But that's not gonna happen, and I've just kind of accepted that already. So, yeah. Towards the end of the episode, we go to the final scene after that Kara and Alex talk. There is a knock on the door, and who is there? It's only... Mr. Mixis Pillick. He has come back. Obviously, he's been recast. So at first, you're like, hmm. And they're like, hmm. He doesn't look like Mixie. But then he reveals his name. And they're like, oh shit. So yeah, Monel's coming back. Mixie's coming back. It's all happening in this one episode, next episode. So please be sure to stick around tonight for my trailer breakdown. As I'm going to be breaking down the trailer, talking about lots of Mixie stuff, lots of Monel stuff and everything like that. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see room.